and I had to do another TOEFL test for my master's degree. And the night before my TOEFL test, I went out with my friends just for a quick drink. Anyway, we went to the East Village in New York, which is full of nice venues after midnight. And after saying goodbye to each other at 6.30 in the morning, I went back home to check the letter just to find out that the exam center was just next door to the club and I had to go back immediately in order not to miss my exam. The highest TOEFL score possible was 760. And I remember getting 740 or 745. And the only points that I missed were in the listening section because my ears were still ringing from that nightclub so I couldn't hear the questions clearly. Oh. There was a button where I was given a chance to repeat the question twice and I still, my ears just couldn't make it. Hey everyone, welcome to the show today. My name is John Drummond, or Yang Haowen. Hi, 大家好，欢迎回到 NG 英文。我是 Stephanie。今天的来宾 Ivan 来自于保加利亚。他是一位指挥家、钢琴家、音乐家，而且是一个很谦虚的人哦。We have a great episode for you today with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ivan. Ivan is from Bulgaria. He is a conductor, a professional pianist, an incredible musician. A humble man, and so much more. So, everyone, please welcome Mr. Ivan. Hello, everyone. Thank God that you said humble; otherwise, I would have blushed. Ah, <laughs> so that, that sort of balanced things off. There we go, my man. So interesting because I've been making a mistake. I've been calling you Ivan. Oh, that's perfectly fine. It's still, it's still spelled correctly. It's still spelled like that. But you told me something very interesting about the fact that. In Bulgaria and some of the Slovakian languages, the spelling I V A N when spoken is actually Ivan, and that means John. Yes, that's correct. So we're namesakes, brothers from other mothers. I love it. Yeah, and it's like the Juan to John. It's you Giovanni, know, Giovanni, Giovanni yes, exactly. Sean in、uh, Irish. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So thank you for that that fun fact of the day, my man. Thank you so much for joining us today on NG Ingwen. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. I know it's been quite a tough time with COVID. As you are a professional musician, you you thrive on live performances, but hopefully we're getting back to it. We are. There we go.、I'm、confident. There we go. And your voice is looking much better. So, Mr. Ivan, do you mind giving us kind of a high level here on NG Ingwen? Who is the man, the myth, the legend? I'm born in Bulgaria. To a musician's family, my mom is a piano teacher. My dad was a very good opera singer. I studied and worked in New York for about ten years, then six years in the UK, five years in Hong Kong, a year in Italy, and a year in Paris, and now in Taiwan since 2020. Of course, with a few jumps back to good old Europe. Good old Europe. I love that. That was very concise. Not your first introduction, I can tell. Yeah, definitely not the first one. <laughs> I was hoping we could start today with kind of where you are now as a musician. Could you take us through? You know, what are you doing? What does it mean to be a professional pianist, especially a professional pianist here in Taiwan? Just like every job, it's difficult. I have to <laughs> create my own projects. I usually wake up, I take a blank piece of paper, and say, "Okay, I want to give a master class here. Maybe I'll have a concert there. I will play small concerts with some、uh, colleagues." That's how it goes when I'm here. So fascinating! Yeah, you're constantly trying to create new opportunities for See, yourself. The, the creativity is not、um, restricted only to how I am going to play something and what kind of interpretation I'm going to give to give it to, but it's also what am I going to do? Where am I going to play? Who am I going to play it for?、Mm. What is the message that I want to give? That's very important because there are so many pianists out there. There.、Um, If you take any of the schools in the world, they, or any of the music schools in the world, they have the majority are pianists, and what happens to all of them afterwards is it's、mm. a bit disproportionate. So unless I come up with my idea, with my projects,、uh, then it goes nowhere. Yeah, and that's very insightful for me because yeah, you forget that all your musician friends are constantly trying to create opportunities for themselves to survive as a musician. But the point is not just to survive, not just to keep on the surface, but to be able to、mm. walk above the surface.、That's, I love that. Yeah, most important part, really, to keep yourself going, to get that momentum when 
the ideas just keep coming and coming and then I'm talking I'm not talking just to make ideas for the sake of having ideas mm-hmm. it's really something that inspires and inspires the others and then brings more musicians together brings the audience that are interested to hear you mm, that's beautiful so yeah. so appropriately deep too yeah as you said you you're coming up with the themes right the, the messages behind exactly, the music exactly. and that inspires the new generation potentially of musicians and inspires current musicians and it creates beautiful shows i'm sure I'm hoping to see you for your next show in November, by the way. Yeah. November 16th, <laughs> hey. National Concert Hall in Taipei. That's it. We're going to talk about that in a second, too. Ivan was born in a music world. His father is a singer, his mother is a piano player. He has been in many countries, such as the United States, New York, France, Bali, Italy, England, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. As a piano player, he thinks that he is the same as any other job. He has a lot of hard work. 比如说，他每天起床第一件事情就是拿一张纸跟笔，想着今天到底要创造什么样的机会给自己，或许是一个演奏会，或是专攻班都有可能。来宾认为，创意这件事情不应该只局限在于怎么演奏或是诠释 （interpret）， 他觉得有非常多需要考量的事情，譬如说，他想要传达什么样的讯息给听众。像这个世界上有这么多的音乐学院，其实大多数的人都是钢琴家。他认为这非常的不成比例 ，disproportionate， 也就是为什么他得不断的创造机会给自己。那有时候这些点子是需要动力的 ，momentum。那他也希望他可以启发 ，inspire 新一代的音乐家。那我非常能够理解他的想法，因为我也曾经立志想要当一位钢琴演奏家，但是后来发现其实竞争非常的激烈。而大多数的人毕业之后，其实是成为钢琴老师或是音乐老师。那后来我思考之后，觉得这或许不是我当初想象的那样，所以就放弃了这个想法。那补充一下，他在十一月十六号的时候，在国家音乐厅会有个表演。那希望大家可以去看看哦。But I was hoping before we get into that, we could talk a little bit about the origin story of you as a piano player. You've spoken so beautifully about your mother and how she was a musician and a teacher, but she never pressured you into being a musician. And I would love、Neither、if you、did. could share about Neither that. Neither did my dad. I started playing the piano when I was six because my mom was a piano teacher. She never taught me because she believed it's too personal. So、mm. she let me do the stuff I do, even if I made mistakes. Only if it was so unbearable for her, she would storm into the room and kindly, gently told me. Can you recheck that place and see? I was like, okay. My dad also never pushed me.、Mm-hmm. I just remember having with him one very serious talk. I was about eight or nine, and I was ready to give up playing the piano because it's very difficult. And all my friends were outside playing and、uh, going to games, to the movies. And very often I was just confined at home with lessons. I I used to take German lessons and、uh, studying piano, studying、uh, music theory, going to a math club. So I was like a little bit of a geek. I love it.、Uh, nerd, yes, and one day I just declared that I'm sick and tired of the piano and I'm going to quit. To quit it, my dad said, "Okay, fine.、Uh, I'll give you 24 hours to consider it. But just remember, once you quit, there is no way going back. Even if you beg me, even if you bribe me, you're not going to play the piano again unless I leave this house." And I remember I had a very, you know, I was eight, so. I got very emotional, and then about twenty minutes later, I went to the kitchen. I was like, "Yes, okay, I'll play the piano." Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You sure? Sure, yes. So that was one、uh, defining point that kept me sort of going, but I had no plans of becoming a pianist. My idea was <clears> to be a music producer or a sound engineer to do something that is more in the peripheral and managerial side of、uh, the music industry. 其实他爸妈并没有强迫他成为一名钢琴家。他是六岁的时候开始学琴。那他八岁的时候其实遇到一个难题，就是他发现其实身边的朋友们都会去看电影或者去玩，而他每天做的事情就是被关押 （confined） 在家里。那他不是在学乐理 （music theory）， 就是去参加数学社 （math club）。所以他觉得其实自己蛮像一个怪咖 （geek）。那他有一天就宣布 declare 他要放弃钢琴，那他爸爸就给了他二十四小时的时间去思考，并且跟他说 
，如果你决定放弃钢琴，那你以后就再也不能学了，直到你搬出去为止。那因为这样子，他变得非常的情绪化 （emotional）。其实他当时并没有想要成为一名钢琴家，而是想要成为音乐制作人 （music producer） 或者是音响工程师 （sound engineer）。而且他比较希望的是，可能。周围相关的 peripheral side 或者是管理面 managerial side. Yeah, yeah, and something happened shortly thereafter. Not shortly, I mean five years later. I was skiing during spring break, and、um, I did something very silly to impress a few young girls in the ski class.、Ah, yeah, we've all been there before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that cost me having, you know, my leg being fractured so severely that. I was in a cast for two and a half months, and you can imagine John just staying home all day long,、mm. not going to school. My buddies coming to see me every other day, just out of pity. And I would study, of course, to catch up with school. I would read books, I would watch movies, I would play games, and still there were about seven or eight hours left out of the day. So it, it felt very boring,、mm. not being able to go anywhere. Because the first thirty days, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even move. So whenever I had to go somewhere, my dad had to sort of give me a hand. Yeah, yeah. It was terrible, and I couldn't shower. Oh, you know, yeah. Oh, yes. Because there was no, suppose no water to drink. Right, right, right. So、uh, after the first month, when I started、uh, limping around the house. I went back to the piano. Said,、hmm, "Let me try." So it one leg sideways because I couldn't put it straight. It was an upright piano. Right. So I had to put it sideways, and I said, "Oh, okay." And then I practiced for about five hours that day. Can you imagine a thirteen-year-old just staying for five hours? And since I had perfect pitch, I was able to correct myself quite quickly, and I really liked it. I did it a few days in a row. My piano teacher showed up, and she was shocked. She thought there was something wrong with me because it was the first time I would play properly ever since she had started teaching me, which was when I was six. Then I fell in love with the piano, and I think it, the piano sort of substituted that、uh, teenage urge for chasing girls. Oh! For about two years, the piano became my girlfriend. Hey! My classmates used to run away from school to go smoking, to go drinking, to make up, make out with girls in the park. And I used to run away from school to go home to practice. Of course, later I also had my little catch up. But、uh, in the most important teenage years,、mm. I spent them at, on the piano, and I don't regret that because eventually things caught up. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. And and it's so interesting how life unfolds like that, right? You know, you break your leg, you think your life's over, and then it became who you are today.、Yeah. And on top of that, seven months later, I was skiing again. Hey,、yeah. there we go. My dad brought me a new pair of skis from Switzerland, and to my mom's horror, horror, <laughs> yes, I was back on the slopes. Oh man, yeah, I can imagine. But so interesting, so beautiful, so pure, and and I really am grateful that、like、you said that your parents nurtured you in that that correct kind of way of like, are you sure this is something you want? Is it for you? You know exactly.、And、They I love were、that. never forcing me to、mm-hmm. do this. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Shout out to all the parents out there doing that. So we said it a little bit, but where's the next place people can actually come see you live in action? The show is going to be on the 16th of November at the National Concert Hall at the Recital Hall. It's a Wednesday night, so I hope to see all of you. I'll be there. 五年后，他再一次的滑雪当中，为了让班上的女同学钦佩他 ，impress， 所以他做了一些傻事，导致他的脚骨折 ，fracture。那他也因此戴了石膏快两个半月。那他其实前三十天是完全无法走路，甚至洗澡的，所以他其实非常痛苦。那因为他为了要跟上学业，还是有在读书。那他在休息的时间也有在玩乐，那他也觉得还是很无聊。所以有一天，他就决定去弹个钢琴。没想到他一练就是五个小时起跳。他当时就从此爱上了钢琴，甚至他认为这个代替了 substituted 他当时想要追求女孩的冲动 urge。那其实他并不后悔。他后来还是买了新的滑雪装备之后，又再次去滑雪喽。I love it. 
Awesome, my man. Well, do you mind if we switch gears a little bit to the story of you with Bulgaria, with the world, and now with Taiwan? And with the lens a little bit of language, you know, English was a part of your life a little bit in Bulgaria, but very little, yes. very little, right? When, as most of my European friends say, but something happened with a story of you trying to apply to Juilliard that really brought up. Sobering story. Yeah, very sobering story. Yeah, After preparing for a year to study at Juilliard. I remember going to New York auditioning, and a week or two later receiving that. Deeply feared rejection letter, and I clearly remember playing very well at the audition. So I decided to call the admissions officer with my broken English. No, actually the story is even funnier because my English was so bad. I asked a very good Bulgarian friend of mine who spoke very good English to pretend that he's smart.、Me. So he called on my behalf. Now I'm starting to blush because that there is another story attached to it. So he called on my behalf, and they explained to him. That basically I failed the English test, and it was so badly presented that、uh, there was no way for me to join the school. I had passed the piano exam, but not the English test. And then I got accepted into another school, Manhattan School of Music, and I remember I did very poorly in the TOEFL test as well. And I got a conditional letter that I had to improve my English, so I had to stay in the summer and take lessons. But I really didn't want to stick around New York. I don't know if you've been in New York in the summer, but it's not the best. It's not the most pleasant. <laughs> yes, place to very、be. rough. <laughs> <laughs> And so, in the winter, to be honest. <laughs> my friend came to the rescue. He called the admission at my Hatton School. He said, "Hello, this is Ivan Yanukov calling.、Uh, may I ask what is the problem with my English? As you can hear me very clearly right now, my English is quite good. Yes, sir." I was there. I was like, I don't know if you should keep it on the table, but it's.、Um, I love it. And they were like, "You're right." And they they said you don't have to take summer classes. Exactly. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's smart.、Yeah. Anyway,、uh, fast forward fast forward four years, I was graduating from my bachelor's degree, and I had to do another TOEFL test for my master's degree. At the time, my English was quite different because I had studied all those liberal arts at school. I had studied right, English right. literature, English language. I had to study、um, structure of English,、um, art history, humanities. Any course that is related to music or arts had to be taught in English. And obviously, at that point, things were at a different level. And the night before my TOEFL test, I went out with my friends just for a quick drink, which、uh, didn't end up being so quick. Quick drink、yeah. sounds like a KTV night here in Taiwan. <laughs> exactly.、Yes. Anyway, we went to the East Village in New York, which is full of nice venues. After midnight, and after saying goodbye to each other at six thirty in the morning, I went back home, which was diametrically opposite、uh, from where I lived in terms of Manhattan.、Uh, right. So you, you went basically all the way back north. <laughs> yes, I went all the way back north to check the letter where my、uh, exam was, just to find out that the exam center was just next door. To the club, and I had to go back, literally immediately, in order not to miss my exam. Wow! And at the time, the the highest TOEFL score possible was seven hundred and sixty points. I don't know how they calculated them; it was not a round number. Right, right, right. And I remember getting seven forty or seven forty five, and the only points that I missed were in the listening section because my ears were. Still ringing from that nightclub, so I couldn't hear the questions clearly.、Oh. There was a button where I was given a chance to repeat the question twice, and I still, my ears just <laughs> couldn't make it. Wow! Yeah, because you were in the nightclub all night with extremely loud music,、exactly. with probably no ear protection. No. no yes, no. at those. Yes. Oh my goodness! And you would have got maybe a perfect score. Probably, I don't know, but it was funny when I. Oh my I, goodness! Yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful story, and it's so cool because it's making me think. You know, you were just now in the environment. You were hanging out with friends in the East Village, going to nightclubs, having a few drinks, and your English was improving naturally. Exactly. Probably my English improved with a few words,、I、with a few if, drinks. I don't know if those words would have been included in the test, but <laughs> definitely. They were added to my vocabulary. Yeah, and and you know, honestly, that's the best advice I can ever give on this show is. 
the more you can just do stuff, you know, hanging out with with foreigners in that target language. Exactly, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to learn. It's the best way to learn. Because uh, one of my best experiences in America was that all my American friends were very helpful. They understood very well that English was not, not my first language. It was your fourth. <laughs> yeah, it was my fourth language, yeah. And This humble guy. <laughs> that was before Suakili. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, before Taiwanese. <laughs> yeah. But in any case, they were very supportive. And if they saw me bew- bewildered at certain words, they would explain what they, mm. what they would mean that's beautiful yeah that 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 community that natural language yeah. exchange between friends and that's that's one of the beauties of that was that was one of the beautiful aspects of america people are very welcoming to foreigners because i'm glad you felt that way i, did, yes, <laughs> I yeah. hope it's still the same i hope so too i, I hope it so yeah same, it should yeah. be the same yeah most i know you know my home country gets a, a lot of bad press we say in english but in there's, the there's to the russians yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, no, it's all good. It's thanks to everyone, to be honest. But I promise you, there are good people in America too, and you know that's the, the one of the examples. Well, you know, they pay me to come out here. <laughs> to pretend I'm to a be government good. spy, actually. <laughs> but no, you know, it's it's the metaphor for life, right? There's good people, there's bad people everywhere, anywhere you go, and uh, our goal is to kind of find those good people. But I love that. Juilliard 是一个位于纽约世界顶级的表演艺术学院。那他当时准备了一年之后才去试镜 audition。那没想到他几周后收到了拒绝信，所以他决定打给招生部门，问他们为什么。那他本来是想要自己打，但是由于他英文不是很好，所以他请了英文比较好的朋友帮他打。没想到他们给他的原因就是因为他的英文真的太糟糕了，所以他没有办法让他入学。他后来其实收到了另一个学校的录取信，但他们有一个前提，就是他必须要上暑假的英文先修课。那因为他不想要上这堂课，所以他请了他英文比较好的朋友，以他的名义打给招生部。那他用流利的英文告知他们状况之后，他也就顺利的无条件录取了。四年之后，他因为要考硕士的关系，得再次考托福。那因为他大学四年以来都是用英文授课，所以其实他英文进步了不少。那他在考试的前一天，本来想要小酌一杯 ，grab a quick drink， 但没想到弄到早上六点半。那当他回到家要确认考试地点之后，才发现，诶，不就在刚刚夜店的旁边吗？那因为距离的关系，他得立刻出发到考场，否则他会错过考试时间。当时满分是七百六，而他考了七百四。其实他后来发现，他错的题目是在听力。那主要的原因是因为他前一晚在夜店太吵了，所以导致他耳鸣而听不清楚。来宾提到，他非常感谢他当地的朋友们，因为他们知道英文不是他的母语，而是他学的四种语言之一。那他们其实给予了非常多的帮助 （support）， 而且他对某些字感到困惑 （bewildered） 的时候，他们也非常愿意解释。And thinking a little bit about what you're doing now here in Taiwan with your music. You're doing master classes and you're teaching, really. And are you teaching now young students? Are you using English? Are you using a little bit of Chinese? How is it working now? I use English and body language. The language of music. Yes, it's a mix between body language and language of music. If a student doesn't speak very well,、mm. I still can demonstrate on the piano. I can show them my hand posture or my body posture,、mm. how I use the pedals, and what kind of phrasing I create. Mm. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so、yeah. cool. And can anyone sign up for classes with of you? Of course, of course. Beautiful, beautiful. If you like, you know, I will give you a discount. So, I'm going, guys. I'm going to learn how to play the piano. I've learned only one song on the piano, and、Which、that was is... because I, I watched a YouTube video. To, Which one is it? To impress my my friend, it was it was a long time ago. It was right when YouTube was coming out. It was a song, terrible song,、uh, Vanessa Carlton. <laughs> Uh, what's a thousand miles? And it's like, and it was just this cool like thumb to pinky thing.、So、did I... you do it with just one hand? Did you do it? With... Oh, I was playing the chords too.、Oh, yeah, yeah. But it took me a while. But the the quick the the melody I was playing with my my right hand to start, and then I wanted to be more impressive. <laughs> so how much time did you practice it? Oh, that took me to get both hands. That took me, I'd say, a week. Okay, that's not bad actually. Yeah, but now if you ask me to do it, could I do it? No. <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a year to learn something. 
Probably it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah, than, probably that was Mozart yeah. or, or Bach, right? Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ivan, for joining us today on NG Yingwen. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. 来宾现在也在授课，那他主要是用英文跟肢体语言 （body language） 跟学生沟通。那因为是钢琴的关系，所以他可以示范 （demonstrate） 给学生。像我自己也有学钢琴，我其实非常能够理解在学习的过程当中有多么辛苦，因为当时为了考检定，每一天都要练习，真的很想放弃。但我很庆幸我当时没有这样做，因为现在虽然我不是靠钢琴为生，但是只要我遇到各种困难，想要抒发心情的时候，就会来弹一首。那我觉得其实思绪会非常清晰，而且心情也好转很多。所以，如果是现在在收听的爸妈们，如果你们小孩在学习音乐的话，请多鼓励他，不要放弃。那我们就谢谢今天的来宾 Ivan。Yeah, absolutely. Where can people maybe sign up for your master classes? Where can they catch you live in action? You can always follow my website, which also has links to my. YouTube channel to my Instagram to my Facebook fan page. Of course, I have my Spotify, I have my iTunes channel, I have KKBox. Oh,、yeah. what would it be under Ivan? Yes, everything、Yanka. is under the same name. Awesome, Mr. Ivan. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. It was, it was fun. I'm glad you could make it in.、Uh, unfortunately, we're sweating in here, but、uh, we'll, we'll get out. You、soon. cannot tell, so you, get, you should get like my shirt.、Too. Yeah, shout out Zara. When、yeah. when's that sponsorship coming? <laughs> Awesome, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the NG Ingwen Show. My name is John. This is Mr. Ivan. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe on all the places where you listen to podcast or YouTube. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Peace. All right. Well, that is our NG Ingwen Show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now Spotify. You can search. Ng Ingwen, or you can search on IG Ng English I C R T, and don't forget to tune in every Wednesday morning from 6:30 to 7, and Wednesday night from 9 to 9:30. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bye bye.